everyone. Welcome to Master Guide One and Outdoor Leadership One. I'm so happy and so glad to be with you again. Even though in this online lecture, I'd like to do all my best to bring to you the best of the Master Guide Ministry. I believe that Master Guide Ministry is not just for theology students and education students. Master Guide Ministry is for everybody. That is why I am bringing this lecture online. I would like to answer the question in this lecture, what is Master Guide? To answer the question, what is Master Guide? I had interviewed some of my fellow Master Guides who are so active, are good in their leadership, and they themselves are blessed with this program. So let us listen to them. Master Guide is the highest honor the church can offer to an Adventist youth. It is very important because it prepares us for the soon return of our Lord Jesus Christ. Hello everyone, this is Master Guide Jemul Jan Filizai. For me, Master Guides are the leaders that serve the church in all areas of youth ministry. And being a Master Guide develops your leadership. Master Guide as a Club is a Seventh-day Adventist church-based organization that trains young people to become a good leader in the future. What is Master Guide to your own perception? Are you urged because it is belong to your curriculum? Or are you urged because your heart has desired to do the Master's test? Just choose and why. Master Guide is more than a curriculum or a subject to enroll. It is a program designed for every young people to be trained in the service of our God. It is very important because it will transform you to become a better person, always ready to serve our Master, no matter what the circumstance is. So what are you waiting for? Be a Master Guide and enjoy serving in His ministry. Master Guide is a ministry in which the primary purpose of this is to train the young people physically, mentally, socially, and spiritually so that the young people will be reminded of their mission and that is to seek and to save the lost. Young people, if you will engage in this ministry, the addiction in some other sins will be eradicated because your mind and your heart will be focused in the purpose of your life and that is to be engaged in the ministry that God has entrusted to each of us. God bless you young people. I hope you will enjoy this kind of ministry, the Master Guide. Thank you so much fellow Master Guides for joining with me in this lecture and today I would like to answer personally what is Master Guide. Before I will answer that question, let me read to you a passage from the book of Judges, chapter 2, verse 10. After that, whole generation had been gathered to their fathers. Another generation grew up who knew neither the Lord nor what he had done for Israel. The context of this passage was mentioned during the time when Joshua and his contemporaries arrived in Canaan and Joshua died together with some of the elders and his contemporaries who have traveled with them or with him during the Exodus time. The passage is telling us that when Joshua died, the new generation did not know the Lord. And this is sad when great leaders like Moses, Joshua, had passed away and the new generation did not know the Lord. We don't want these things to happen in our church. We believe that the Lord should be known by our generation from our generation until the last generation when Jesus comes. And uh, to do that, we have to pass what we have right now 
to our generation. We don't want that our future generation will not be able to know the Lord. Why that the new generation did not know the Lord? When I studied the passage, I found out in verse 8 and in verse 9, the parents during the time of Joshua failed to train their children to become a spiritual leaders. According to the background of the passage, the parents were busy to conquer the lands. They had forgotten to nurture the faith of their children. Especially when Joshua died, he failed to train young leaders to follow his leadership. And uh, the same thing with our generation today, we'll be able to have our generation in the future. Same thing will happen to us if we will not, you know, train our children. And that is why personally, I am really happy to train young people so that someday, many of these young people will become leaders and they will be able to nurture even my children also. The Bible is telling us, train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. You know, training according to Mrs. White is being done inside the home primarily. It is being done in the local church and it is also being done in the school. And in the house, we have our parents as our primary teachers. In the church, our leaders, our elders. And in the school, we have our teachers. And to train up a child, we need someone who is expert and someone who can guide the life of the child in this generation. And that is the work of the master guide. The work of the master guide is to train. But before you can train, you must become a trainee yourself. You know, you must also undergo training. So training is very important because this is the tool in order for the word education to be materialized in the life of every child. And that is why we need to undergo training before we could become a good trainer of ourselves. And training does not happen in one day. The word training, the word training does not happen in one day. The word training should be done every day, every week, every month. And it should be done, you know, from time to time. Because even though you will become master guides already, still training should always be practiced. Master guides are trained to be a servant of God. It means to say that a master guide himself should be a servant of God before he could bring someone to Jesus Christ. We are not trained to become the servant of someone. It means to say that our leaders is not human being. Our leaders, if we are joining the master guide training, should be Jesus Christ, the master guide of all master guides. Number two, we are trained to be a friend to men. And that is to do something in the community in which we could express the love of Jesus Christ in order for them to also appreciate Jesus Christ, our master guide. Furthermore, master guide is originally a church-based program, meaning this is the program of the Seventh-day Adventist. If you know the structure of the Seventh-day Adventist church, our Adventist church have different departments like Sabbath school department, treasury department, and other departments. Master guide belongs to the EYF department meaning it belongs to the Adventist Youth Ministries. This program is only adapted in the school base, but originally this is a church-based program. Master Guide is a ministry. Today, our leaders have divided the youth 
The first one are the junior youth, and the second one are the senior youth. Uh, there are two clubs under the junior youth. We have the adventurer clubs and then the pathfinder club. We have the adventurer club and the pathfinder club. And, and Master Guide's ministry is focused on the pathfinder club and the adventurer club. While uh, the senior youth leadership, or, or they call it the SYL, are focusing on the training of the ambassadors and the young adults. The adventurer club, the pathfinder, the ambassadors, and the young adults, they all have their own curriculum. The one who is responsible for training and teaching those curriculum will be the SYL for the senior youth and the master guides for the junior youth. So this is the umbrella of the Adventist youth leadership. We have the master guide that is leading the junior youth and we have the, the SYL or Youth Leadership Award in the senior youth. Under the master guides are the adventurer ministry and those are the children from six years old to nine years old. And the pathfinder ministry from 10 years old to 15 years old. The ambassador ministry are from 16 to 21 years old, while the young adult ministry are ages 22 to 30 years old. You know, sometimes we don't appreciate this structure because uh, sometimes we don't follow this structure in our church. However, this is really the structure of the Adventist youth ministries. Therefore, Master Guide is a ministry. So I would like to emphasize that Master Guide is not just simply, you know, a curriculum that you are going to take. It is a ministry. If you become a Master Guide of yourself, then you are now entitled and responsible for the ministries that you will be doing. Master Guides can also be one of the clubs. See, here in CPAC, we have three clubs. The Adventurer Club, the Pathfinder Club, and the Master Guide Club. The Master Guide Club are those students or young people who are still in the training program. So, you are still under the club. After you become Master Guides, then you are going to function as Master Guides doing the ministry to the Adventurer Club and the Pathfinder Club. So in your churches, in your districts, if you have the Adventurer Club, the Pathfinder Club, you can also have the Master Guide Club. Those who will be graduated in the Master Guide Club or invested in Master Guide Club, they will be, you know, licensed to become a leader to the Adventurer Club and the Pathfinder Clubs as their ministry, as their main ministry. The Master Guide curriculum is one of the leadership programs that the General Conference Youth Ministries Department uses to train people for youth leadership. It is called the PhD of Youth Ministry in the field. Meaning to say the Master Guide should be the, the meaning to say that the Master Guide is the highest training that can be given to young people when it comes to, you know, pathfinder and adventurer ministry. And that is why that is why it is really good for everyone to be, for everyone to become master guides so that there there will be many leaders that can be utilized in training of our children. Master Guides is also known as an international organization. You know, it's a worldwide organization. Wherever you go, as long as there is a Seventh-day Adventist church, there is a Pathfinder ministry, there is a Master Guide club. You know, sometimes we love to join clubs because it can benefit us. You are in a right track because Master Guide is a worldwide organization. Wherever you go, as long as you will just present your ID, your certificate that you are a master guide, then you are welcome and you are being recognized to become a leader in the church and in the Pathfinder ministry. I remember when I was in Marshall Island, I was able to receive the directorship among all of us. There are many of us in the school 
but I was given the task to become a director of the Pathfinder Club because I was a master guide. To wherever you go, your your license or your investiture certificate and your ID can be used as a master guide leader. You will go to Africa, America, Europe, Asia, wherever you are, you can join in any club as long as as long as you are a master guide if there are some you know pathfinder wide campuri like uh, ssd wide campuri nsd wide campuri or worldwide church campuries then you are entitled all those benefits being the member of the club worldwide and i'm so glad that my family is also a member of the club my wife is a member of this club my daughter is a member of the club and my son is also a member of this worldwide organization there are two basic requirements in order for you to join in the club number one you must be a baptized member of the seventh adventist church a baptized master guide means that he is already spiritually matured a baptized master guide means that he himself is being saved by the grace of jesus christ because his purpose is to bring someone to jesus christ so how can you bring and do ministry if you yourself is not a baptized member of the seventh day adventist church number two you must be 16 years old about why that 15 or 16 years below should not be you know qualified to become master guide because as a master guide you will be dealing with children you will be dealing with young people and uh, 16 years old above are matured enough to lead out those children and young people below them and below their age and that is why when you become a master guide it is expected that you must be mature both spiritually and you should be also much be matured in your character now there are some common misconceptions of what is a master guide to become a master guide is not just an honorary rank conferred to you because of your age not because that you are already 40 years old 50 years old you will just be automatically be invested as master guide no you have to really earn the honors you should really undergo training in order for you to become a master guide it is not a status given to you because of something great you have done in the past and uh, because you are already a hero then you will be you know a proclaimed master guide. let us say you are a soldier you are already a marine a policeman then automatically you become a master guide no that is not a master guide. It is not a title that we give you at the end of a, of a course of study or graduation. Meaning to say, after this, after taking this class, it does not mean you are already a master guide. You know, we what we are doing is just simply an academic thing. If you want to become a master guide, then it must be beyond academic. It is more than just a smart uniform in order that people may respect and adore you. See, some people are just wearing their, their uniform just to be proud that they are master guides. But if you can see those people wearing their uniform, does not mean that they are master guides. See, not all policemen who are wearing police uniform are policemen. Some of them are just, you know, acting like a policeman. Same thing with the master guide. So it is not according to their uniform. So what is really a master guide? There are six elements that master guides are expected for. Number one, they must be a servant of God. Number two, a guide, an example for the youth. Number three, a leader of the church. Number four, works with children and teens. Five, an expert, a specialist, a master. And six, a useful and resourceful Person. Those are what is being expected as master guides. When you say a master guide, at least you possess those six characters. Being a servant of God, you have to serve your master. Being a servant of God, then you have to become an example to young people. That is why even though you have skills, as long as your life is not an exemplary life to the young people, still 
you are not qualified to be called a master guide. A master guide also is expected to participate in any leadership in the church. You should be happy leading in all departments or in whatever departments that you are assigned in the church. You should be leading young people and children. Master guides are also expected to work with children and teens. You must possess a kind of, you know, loving spirit for children. You should be interested with teens and children. These young people need someone who could guide them. And it is a master guide who is an expert and a specialist in this leadership. You are also expected to be expert in skills and a specialist in some areas. I'm not saying that uh, if you're a master guide, you become a master of all. But at least if you, if you are a master guide, you have to, to be expert in a certain area. And then you must also be useful and resourceful person. That is why after the investiture, I am telling all the master guides, after you become a master guide, you must be resourceful of yourself. Wala sing pangayo ay resources. You should be the one who will really find ways how you can have your own resources in your own training. To summarize, there are two key words in master guiding. Number one, salvation. And number two, service. Being a leader, you are expected to lead the church, to lead your home, you lead your family, and you lead your community to Jesus Christ. And uh, you are, you know, universally recognized within the network of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, wherever you go. As long as you will say, I'm a master guide, then someone will always look at you as a leader, an expert, meaning you should be skillful and knowledgeable in Many skills that the Master Guide Club and the Pathfinder Club are teaching like marching, first aid, tying, orienting, and other survival skills and uh, any skills that are needed for ministry. You are also expected to become a guide, someone who is able to show the way to how something is done, to counsel a person, someone who could lead someone to do things, not just simply to tell them, but really show them how to do it you are also as a master guide you are also expected to become uniform person it means that you are a model of discipline and a good example before the youth you are also expected to become useful person resourceful and good to have him around that is why if uh, you become a master guide then your fellow young people and other people will just simply say, oh, uh, we have so-and-so uh, master guide with us. So don't worry because the master guide is here. See, people are really expecting that you are useful person. Serve up. It means that you are ready to serve whenever and wherever duty calls. Even though it's midnight, if someone needs your help, you should be there and ready to do so because you are a master guide. To summarize, there are two keywords that is being attached to master guiding. First one is salvation and the other one is service. So salvation is being a servant of God and service is being a friend to man. Salvation is leading someone to Jesus Christ. So that is master guide is all about. And to orient ourselves a little bit with the clubs, we have the Adventurer Club, the Pathfinder Club, and the Master Guide Club. The Adventurer Club have six classes, and we have these pre-adventurers and the adventurers class. The pre-adventurers started, started with age four. We call them the Little Lamb, the Eager Beaver, the BCB, Sunbeam, Builder, and the Helping Hand with their respective ages. Some of you who will become teachers in the elementary, mostly your focus will be the Adventurer Club. You can also start this in your local church by categorizing children into their ages and then start your Adventurer Ministry. Under the Pathfinder Club, there are also six classes. 
It started with a friend, companion, explorer, ranger, voyager, and guide. At school, grade 5 starts with friend, grade 6 companion, grade 7 explorer, grade 8 ranger, grade 9 voyager, and grade 10 guide. That is why when you become a grade 11, you are already qualified to become a master guide. Now, those different colors represent the six classes. The second one here, we call this the blue represents friend, the red represents companion, the green represents explorer, and then uh, the silver represents ranger, maroon represents voyager, and yellow represents the guide. This is also being reflected with the pins, the bars, and then the chevron. The Pathfinder Triangle is the official Pathfinder emblem and uh, it has several parts on it and uh, this emblem have different meaning. The color red represents sacrifice, color white purity, color gold excellence, color blue loyalty, shield protection, and the sword represents the Bible. And the three sides represents the Trinity and the tripod of education which is to develop the spiritual, mental, and the physical well-being of the person. As you go along in your training, you should also have access with different manuals. The adventurer clubs have their own manual. So this is the adventurer's administration manual. This is the adventurer club teacher's resource manual, and the pathfinder administrative manual, and the pathfinder basic staff training manual. All of these manuals are downloadable online. This is the master guide flag, yellow, white, and blue. And this is the official logo of the master guide club. We have that world and around are the six stars. Those six stars represents the six classes of the Pathfinder club. Now, as master guides, you are also expected to download the master guide curriculum manual. All of them are downloadable and are also available in our Moodle. As master guides, you are also required to take Pathfinder honors. There are so many Pathfinder honors. All the Pathfinder honors are being divided into eight categories. The first one are the household arts. Second one are the outdoor industries the recreation, outreach, nature, health and science, arts and crafts, and vocational. You should memorize all of this because this is part of becoming a master guide. Now, as a club and as an organization, you have to memorize some of the mantra in the club. We have the MISPA. And to recite the MISPA, you have to hold your fingers like this and then put it at the left side of your arms, and then recite the Mispa. May our Heavenly Father watches over all Adventist youth around the world, watches over you and me till we meet again. And uh, the Pathfinder song, we have, uh, we're going to produce a video for this. And then the motto, for the love of Christ constraineth us, the pledge, by the grace of God, I will be pure and kind and true. I will keep the Pathfinder law. I will be a servant of God and a friend to men. We have also the Pathfinder law, which is for me to keep the morning watch, do my honest part, care for my body, keep a level eye, be courteous and obedient, walk softly in the sanctuary, keep a song in my heart going on God's errands. Pledge to the Christian flag. I pledge allegiance to the Christian flag and to the Savior for those kingdom it stands. One brotherhood, uniting all mankind in service and love. Pledge to the Bible. I pledge to the Bible God's holy word and will take it as a lamp unto my feet, a light unto my path, and hide its words in my heart that I may not sin against God. You have also to memorize the aim and the motto, the Advent message to all the world in this generation, and the love of Jesus Christ constraineth us. Okay guys, so this is just an introduction to what is Master Guide and there will be many more things that you need to learn as we go along with this training. God bless you and see you next lecture.